gentlemen, and welcome to the sixth week of our 40th year of the Frederick County Public Schools Academic Tournament. I'm your moderator, Eric Reichel, and I would start by thanking Beth Strakonsky, her husband, Frank, and the incomparable Kelly Meisner, who do everything to make this work so well and so smoothly. And Kelly also writes all the math questions, so I heard we couldn't do that. All right, I see four awesome students from Catoctin High School. You look ready to rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, now there's only three. I jinxed us. All right, we're waiting on one more from Catoctin, and off we will go. Go ahead, Jake. Raff is not here yet. All right, then. Catoctin High School, would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round? I'm Natalie Boche, and I'll be the captain for this round. I'm Summer Clausen. I'm Catherine Moore. I'm Jacob Hartness. Okay, all right. Well, Natalie, would you please pick packet A, packet B, or packet X for your team? Um, let's go B. B. Okay, all right. Round one is a uh, grab bag of six questions and one up for right answer, no points off for a wrong answer. All right, and off we go then. Question number one, multiple choice. What is the only edible food that never expires? Is it white rice, barley, or honey? Honey, right? I want to say honey, yeah. I would go honey. Yeah, I feel like that sounds right. Uh, C, honey, final answer. That is correct. Weird, fascinating, right? Who knew? I didn't know that, but it makes, makes sense. Yeah. Question number two, also multiple choice. What sport uses a broom? Is it sailing, curling, wakeboarding, or croquet? Curling. It's curling. Yeah, it's curling. Curling, final answer. I thought you might not know it on a non-Olympics uh, year, but you know it. <laughs> Question number three. Who wrote the tragic dramas, Oedipus Rex, Oedipus at Colonus, and Antigone? Anyone? I'm not sure. No. Time? No, no response. Oh, that is Oedipus. Uh, excuse me, that is Sophocles, who wrote Oedipus. Uh, very, very, the literature gets you again. Sorry about that. Sophocles was the answer for that one. Question number four. In the year 2020, and matter of fact, in the year 2021, who is the monarch of England? Queen Elizabeth II, right? Yes. Right. Uh, Summer, Jake. Queen Elizabeth II. I have right? no idea. I think Catherine, yeah. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II, final answer. Yes, that's correct. I wrote that 2020 because that was back in the fall, and I wasn't sure if she was going to make it, but she's still going strong. Good for her. So, yeah, that's correct. Question number five The slogan, peace, land, and bread, was used by what leader to throw a revolution in Russia in 1917? World War One. It sounds familiar. <laughs> was it Lenin? Stalin was World War Two. Was Lenin before or after him? I think before. Just was go with it. Why not? Time. Lenin. Final answer. That is correct. Excellent. And question number six. Which law of physics states that unless acted upon by a force? A body in motion will change direction and gradually slow until it eventually stops. Is it Newton's third law? I know it's an object in motion. Stays in motion. That's his second. That's his second law, right? I don't know. I thought it was a third. Time. Let's go. Newton's third law. I'm sorry. It's that no law of physics states this. So that is kind of a trick question. Sorry about that. I don't write the science ones, as you know, but that completes round one. One, two, three, four. Okay, round two, math round, four questions. Remember that the two math questions, you get 30 seconds. Ms. Meisner will prompt you with five seconds to go. And remember, in this round and all, all the rest of these rounds, one up for a right answer, one down for a wrong answer, or if you give no answer, it's still one down. So take a guess. Would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round? My name is Ava Mays, and I'll be the captain. My name is Nick Miller. I'm Carson Keller. I'm still Jacob Hartness. Excellent. All right, then let's start the math round with a math question. Question number one, math. Find the domain of the following function. Y 
equals 1 divided by the quantity x squared minus 9. Begin time. Yeah, uh, isn't it that x can't equal negative 3 or 3? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I have. Uh, final answer, x cannot equal negative 3 or 3. So that's what that little equal sign with a slash means. Hmm, okay, excellent, thank you. That's correct. Question number two. In the Peanuts comic strip, what color is the bird Woodstock? Yellow. Yellow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yellow. Final answer, yellow. That is correct. Question number three, math. How many degrees is three pi over four radians? Begin time. Is it 135? It's somewhere in that quadrant. I think it's 135. So whatever the middle is in the second quadrant. Yeah. Okay, final answer, 135 degrees. That is correct. Excellent, and question number four. The people whose ancestors were indigenous to the Australian continent before British colonization are traditionally known by this name. It's like uh, aboriginals. Aboriginals? Some, yeah, I think so. Okay. Final answer, operiginals. Oh, boy. Um, say yes. The answer is aborigine. So you add an L to it. So I'm going to say that is correct. But I will let Kelly and Beth talk that over. Aboriginals, aborigines. Abor Beth, you want to weigh in right there? Aboriginal. It is aboriginal or aborigine. So that would be correct? Then that's correct, and that completes round two. Thank you. Okay, we're back to four. These are my people. These are the people that like film and books, right? Because this is round three, the category round, pre-announced category questions, and this is how books are adapted into film. And remember, I'm looking for the film name. Okay, on these three questions. They're kind of long. Listen carefully. Would you pre please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round? I'm Natalie Boshai, and I'll be the captain this round. I'm um, Raphael Smaldon. I'm Jacob Hardis. Go ahead, Ava. I'm Ava Mays. <laughs> I'm going to make you do it each time. Okay, here we go. Uh, book to screen adaptations, question number one. In the book, it is the young girl who is clearly the main character. However, in the film, her lawyer father is portrayed as the main character. In the book, the young girl's Aunt Alexandra and her Uncle Jack were important, but in the film, they were left out entirely. Mrs. DuBose, an important minor character in the book, is barely seen in the film, nor is the inside of Miss Caroline's classroom. Name this film that features the young girl narrating her memories of growing up in the South. To Kill a Mockingbird. Mock yeah, definitely To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird, final answer. That is correct. Question number two. The book written by Philip K. Dick in 1968 was called Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? It was set in a nearly abandoned San Francisco after a deadly world war that has destroyed, nearly destroyed the Earth with radioactive fallout. The 1982 film directed by Ridley Scott and starring Harrison Ford, was set in Los Angeles, and the androids are far less violent and evil. What was the name of this film? Anybody? I don't know. Rafi, Jake, anything? I don't know. I don't. Just throw Time. Random one. Any guess? No, no response. Blade Runner. Blade Runner, fantastic film, highly recommend. <clears throat> Question number three. This important autobiography of 1965 was told to Alex Haley and focused on a civil rights leader and how he grew up and changed as he learned more about racism in the United States. Spike Lee took up the challenge of filming the story in 1992 and he had Denzel Washington play the main character. Both book and film concentrate on key events in the subject's life, including growing up poor in Michigan becoming a hustler and criminal in New York City, going to prison, and then joining the Nation of Islam and working with Elijah Muhammad. 
name this important film. I know the book is the autobiography of Malcolm X. That's what, yeah. But is I, it the movie? Or is it just Malcolm X? Or is it just or, X? Or Mr. X or something? Uh, it definitely has I, X in it. Time. Uh, Mr. X, final I'm answer. Sorry. It's, it's, it's Malcolm X. I'm sorry, not Mr. X. That completes, you had the idea, I just didn't have the title. That completes round three. One, two, three, four, five, four. Okay, round four. All right, fourth and final round. Uh, seven questions on a variety of topics. One up for right answer, one off for wrong answer. Please introduce yourselves one last time and tell me who will be the captain in this last round. My name is Ava Mays and I'll be the captain. Pay my dogs, pay my dogs no mind. My name is Nick Miller. I'm Summer Clausen. And I'm Natalie Boche. And who's captaining this round? I'll be the captain of this Ava? round. Ava, okay. And by the way, Summer, I love your background. Thank you. All right, All right. Round, round four, here we go. Question number one. What country landed the first man-made object, Luna 2, on the moon? This happened in 1959, which spurred the United States to spend more money on the space race. Name the country that was first to land something on the moon. It's got to be the Soviet Union. Soviet Union. Yeah. Final answer, Soviet Union. That's correct. Question number two. Dulcinea was his love, Roxanante was his horse, and Sancho Panza was his faithful squire. Name this mixed-up chivalric knight created by Cervantes. It's Don Quixote. Yeah, that's what I was saying, Don Quixote. Final answer, Don Quixote. That is correct. Question number three. H-I-P-P-C-O. H-I-P-P-C-O is the acronym for, is the acronym for Habitat Loss, Invasive Species, Pollution, Population, Climate Change, Overfishing. These are the reasons for what ecological problem? Climate change or global yeah, warming? Yeah, I would say climate change. Yeah, that's a good guess. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to say incorrect. I have loss of biodiversity. Kelly, you may want to check and see if loss of biodiversity is climate change, but I believe those are two separate things. Question number four. He was played by Robert Englund in the Nightmare on Elm Street films <clears throat> in the beginning. What was the name of the scary character he played, complete with gloved hands with long razors? Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands. Final answer, Edward Scissorhands. No, I'm sorry. Edward Scissorhands is a beautiful, wonderful character who never would hurt anybody. <laughs> um, Freddy Krueger is the mean guy on Nightmare on Elm Street that slices people up. I love it. I love it. Question number five. This Central American country is home to the world's first ever chocolate bar, stemming from a Mayan belief, largely shared by many Americans, that chocolate is the food of the gods. Name this country whose currency is the Quetzal of the Quetzal and whose capital is Guatemala City. It's Guatemala. 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 Final answer, Guatemala. Food of the gods. Those Guatemalans know what they're talking about. Question number six. This country has the oldest surviving parliament in the world that was formed in the year 930 AD with the first assembly of the Alpagin. In what Nordic island country in the North Atlantic Ocean with the sparsest population in Europe is this parliament still working? It could be Iceland. Is it, or Greenland. It's Final probably answer. not Greenland. Iceland. Yeah, I would assume not. Final answer, Iceland. That is correct. And question number seven. What author was the first to use the word nerd in print? He used it for a creature in his children's book, If I Ran the Zoo. Name this author whose real name is Theodore Giesel. Oh, it's Dr. Uh, Seuss. Yeah. yeah. Final answer, Dr. Seuss. That is correct. That is well done. And that completes the match for Katakta. Nicely played, ladies and gents. Frederick next.
Did everyone notice my pink for Valentine's Day? I've got I've got pink on. I'm, I'm pinked up. Oh, good job, Beth. You're on top of it. Never. One, two, three, four. Welcome, Frederick High School. And welcome, ladies and gents, to the second uh, team in our first match of our sixth night of our 40th season. Wow, I got all that right, I think. Uh, welcome, Frederick High School. And would you please introduce yourselves and tell me, oh, wait, we have five people on. There's four. Would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who the captain will be in this round? Hello, my name is Mia Venezia. I'm a senior at Frederick High School, and I will be the captain for this first round. Hi, my name is Samuel Boyson, and I'm a senior at Frederick High School. I'm Ella Crone, and I'm a junior at Frederick High. And I'm Paul Kelshings, and I'm also a junior. Okay, two seniors and two juniors. Uh, Mia, would you please pick for me packet A or packet X? Packet X. X is. Okay. First round, a grab bag of six questions on a variety of topics. One up for a correct answer, no points off for a wrong answer. Here we go with question number one. What is the coefficient of sliding friction between a 50 kilogram object and the ground if it requires 100 newtons of force to slide the object at a constant speed? It will be like a negative 100 normal force. I mean, force against it because- Negative 100. Negative 100, normal force. Shall we go Fine. with that? Uh, final answer, negative 100, normal force. I'm sorry, it's incorrect. It's 0 0.2. 0 0.2. Question number two. What is the second tallest mountain in the world? The answer has only one letter and one number. K2. K2? All right. Final answer, K2. That is correct. Question number three. In golf when standing on the first tee. If someone tells you to go ahead and take a mulligan, what does he allow, he or she, what are he or she allowing you to do? Uh, it's miss one, is like miss the first hole or something like that. What does anybody remember? Oh, it's like a free walk across the field. Oh my gosh. What is this? It's like you subtract a point or something. Oh, no. Time. Uh, free walk. Across. No, I'm sorry. It's um, replay a bad drive or take another shot. So you had the right idea, but I couldn't quite give you credit for that one. Question number four. The chief source of this Shakespearean comedy is thought to be tale nine from day three of Boccaccio's to Cameron. The characters included Helena, Diana, and Bertram. Name the title of the Shakespearean comedy in which things finally turn out for the best. Is this as you like it? What do you all think? Shall we go with them? Final answer as you like it. Sorry, all's well that ends well. Those A, those A plays tend to get mixed up, it's true. Question number five. What condiment was sold in the 1830s as a medicine? It is often paired with mustard on hot dogs and burgers. Ketchup, I assume. All right. All right, final answer, ketchup. It is ketchup. And question number six. What religious and dynastic war lasted from 1618 to 1648? You may wish to use some mathematical skills to come up with the answer. Is this the Seven Years' War? What was your idea? 1618 to 1648, right? 30 yeah. Years war. 30 years yeah, war. 30 years war. <laughs> My apologies, 30 years war. All right, final answer, 30 years war. Mathematics, got it, nailed it, perfect. <laughs> Good job, Sam. That completes round one. All right, one, two, three, and four. All right, math. 
Round two is a math round. Four questions. A uh, reminder on the two math questions, you're allowed 30 seconds to come up with the answer. Ms. Meisner will prompt you with five seconds to go. And remember, this round and every other subsequent round, one up for a wrong answer and one down for an incorrect answer. Could you please introduce yourselves for round two? Hi, my name is Samuel Boyson. I'm a senior at Frederick High School, and I'll be the captain for this round. My name is Paul Kettleswings, and I'm a junior at Frederick High School. I'm Nicholas Prada, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Tony Tang, and I'm also a sophomore. All right, here we go. Question one on the math round is a math question. Find the domain of the following function. Y equals the square root of the quantity X squared plus 81. Begin time. Wouldn't this be like negative nine to infinity? That's what I'm thinking. All right, so should we go with negative nine as the answer? Oh, was the question just domain? Yeah, yeah it's domain. domain. So wouldn't it be all so, real numbers? It's, uh, oh wait, oh, no, I looked at it wrong. Yeah, I read it wrong. I don't think it's that. It. I, I read it's it wrong. All, it's all numbers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All numbers. Time. Answer, please. All the numbers. Is that correct, Kelly? Well, my answer is all real numbers, and he said all the numbers. I said. He all said all numbers. real numbers. Oh, he did. Okay. Good. 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 Excellent, Sam. Should have known you got it right. So that's correct. Good. Question number two: Sixty to seventy percent of cases of dementia are caused by this disease. Oh, Alzheimer's, right? Yeah. All right. Final answer, Alzheimer's. That is correct. Question number three, math. How many degrees is five pi over six radians? Begin time. I'm pretty sure this is 150. I think it's 150 as well. Oh. Yeah. All right. Final answer, 150 degrees. That is correct. And question number four. What is life like, according to the mother of Forrest Gump? Like a box, a box of, chocolate. of chocolates. Okay, final answer, like a box of chocolates. That is correct, and that completes round two. Excellent job on the math. Okay, I'm very pumped for round three, book to screen adaptations. This has my two favorite things, books and films. So hopefully you're right with me. Okay, you're my people here. All right, would you please introduce yourselves for this pre-announced category round of book to screen adaptations? And who will be the captain? Hello, my name is Mia Venezia. I'm a senior and I will be the captain for this third round. Hi, my name is Jonas Chalkley and I'm a sophomore. Uh, my name is Hello, my name is Elena Fletcher, and I'm a senior at Frederick High School. All right, we are set then. Here we go. And reminder, the answers are going to be the names of the film. Okay, so any books, that, that's part of the clue maybe, but the answer is going to be the name of the film. And they're kind of long, so listen carefully. Question number one. This famous film was vastly different from the series of books that it was taken from. In the books, the heroine really did travel to an unknown land, Whereas in the film, it turned out to be just a dream. The books explore the backstories of the supporting characters, and the heroine meets Glinda only at the end of the book, not in the beginning, as in the film. And the book is much more violent, as the antagonist sends wolves, crows, and bees to kill the heroine. Name this film that was very loosely adapted from the book, which was published in 1900. This is The Wizard of Oz, right, guys? Yep. Yes. All right, final answer, The Wizard of Oz. Correct, and what a... What a film it is. Question number two. This is a famous and classic science fiction novel, 65, by Hank Herbert. And it has a memorable scene involving a gigantic sandworm and the making of a special kind of spice. It was made into a film in 1984 by director David Lynch that is beautiful to look at, but is a mess in terms of plot. Another version of this novel is slated to be released this year, directed by Denis uh, Villeneuve and starring Timothy Chalamet and, as Paul Atreides. Name this novel and film. 
This is Dune. 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 Yes, indeed. Yeah. Our final answer, Dune. I am so psyched to see Dune. I think it's going to be great. That is correct. <clears throat> Question number three. This epistolary 1982 novel by Alice Walker is a series of letters between sisters Celie and Nettie in rural Georgia. It is a rough and sometimes ugly novel about powerlessness in American culture. The 1985 film version, directed by Steven Spielberg, a much more positive and warm version of the story, and avoids some of the ugly violence incorporated into the novel. Name this story that is considered a rite of passage for many young black women. Why does this sound like the color purple? What do you all think? That is just one idea thrown out there, but I'm not entirely sure. I go with that. All right, shall we go with the color sure. purple? Final answer, the color purple. You got all three. That is an excellent book, and that is an excellent round, Frederick. Well done. And that's what I expect in a category round. I expect you to nail them all, right? You've studied these. These aren't trick questions. So well done. That's what I want to hear. Okay, round four, final round, seven questions on a variety of topics. Please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round. Hello, my name is Mia Venezia. I'm a senior at Frederick High School, and I will be the captain for this final round. Hello, my name is Jonas Chalkley, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, my name is Samuel Boyce, and I'm a senior at Frederick High School. And I'm Paul Kettleshings, and I'm a junior. Very good. Okay, then. Here we go with round four. Question number one. 1515 was the last time this European country went to war with another country when they lost against the French. In the century since, this country has cultivated the idea of neutrality. And over 200 years ago, this country was acknowledged as a neutral state in the Treaty of Paris. Name the country. This Switzerland? I'm pretty yeah. sure it's Switzerland. Yeah. All right. So we go with Switzerland. All right, final answer, Switzerland. That is correct. Question number two. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail are his sisters, and he is constantly scheming to get into Father Mac Farmer McGregor's garden, named the hero of the children's book by Beatrix Potter. It's like Peter Rabbit or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. What do you all think? No. no. Or is it okay, shall we go with that then? Final answer, Peter Rabbit. It is definitely Peter Rabbit. Yes, indeed. Good. Question number three. In the abyss of the ocean, no sunlight reaches the ocean floor. In areas where there is volcanic activity, there may be deep sea thermal vents. Instead of photosynthesis by green plants making glucose, specialized bacteria use this element with hydrogen in the process of chemosynthesis to make glucose. Name the element. Is it like chlorophyll or something? What do you all think? It's an element, so it can't be cool. Lead? Lead might be. I don't know. I mean, I have no clue. Maybe not there. It's logically. Sulfur or something like that. Sulfur. Sulfur. Okay. Shall we go with sulfur? All right. Final answer sulfur. Final answer sulfur. That is correct. It is so fun to watch you guys figure it out. Yes. <laughs> Good job. Well done. Question number four What is the name of the serial killer in the Halloween series of horror films? Oh my gosh, I just watched Freddy this movie. Krueger? Yeah, wait, I think so. Is, is it Jason? I don't know which one. It's, Jason, it's Jason. either Jason Voorhees or... Let's go with Jason. Uh, final answer, Jason Voorhees. No, I'm sorry, that's a different series. This is Michael Myers. Jason's the, Jason's a different one. Question number five. The McDonald's Happy Meal was originally thought by Yolanda Fernandez de Cofino from Guatemala where a burger and fries were paired with a small sundae geared towards the young, younger palate. This idea was later modified to what we know today by adding a what? Toy. I think you might be correct, yeah. Shall we go with toy then? Final answer, toy. Yes, the Americans with their <laughs> desire for things, right? Toy, that is correct. Question number six. Israel was founded in what year? Just three years after the end of World War II. 1948, right, guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Final answer, 1948. That is correct. And question number seven. This literary character first appeared in 1953 in Ian Fleming's book, Casino Royale. He also appeared in Moonraker, Diamonds Are Forever, and From Russia With Love, all novels in the 1950s. 
name this famous literary spy. James Bond, right, guys? Oh, yeah. Okay. Final answer, James Bond. Mia, yeah, you really should say Bond, James Bond. Should you not? Yes. That is correct. Well done, Frederick. That completes your round. Excellent play. Excuse me, Kitty. All right. Yay. Awesome job, team. I opened uh, the Frederick Google Meet, so you guys can go there. I'm going to stick around and watch the next team, but I'll call you back when we're ready. They played, played well, Amy. Yeah, they did. I'm proud of them. <laughs> and now, Urbana. Eric, you're um, breaking up a little bit. So I think after this, Matt, after this team, I'll have you log off and log back on for match two. See if I that can do helps. do it right now if you want. OK. Do you want me to do it now? Let's give it a Actually, try. We should probably keep it the same. We should probably keep it the same for those three teams. So yeah. you're right. We'll wait until this match. If anything, I'll try and go a little slower. It's random, trust me, it's not consistent. Okay, okay, all right, gotcha. One, two, hi, Mr. King. All righty. Good evening, uh, Urbana. Round one will be Evelyn as captain, Holden, Brina, and Abby. Thanks, Dale. And Mr. King, we love you to death, but you can't have your camera on because you're going to be giving stuff away. We'll fix that. No, thank you so much. All right, here we go. I know that. I know that man too well. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Urbana High School, to match one of the sixth week of our 40th year of Frederick County Public Schools Academic Tournament. Thanks, Kelly. Yep. Um, please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in one for you. I'm Avi Santel Kumar. I'm Brina Ritanji. I'm Holden Reinsfelder. I'm Evelyn Sun, and I'll be the captain for this round. And we would like to thank the Ox. Happy Lunar Moo Year. Yes, yes. And maybe you want to celebrate and have a fun uh, party of some kind, but I couldn't. Happy, happy New Year. All right, here we go. Um, round one, grab bag one up for a right answer, no points off for a wrong answer, right? Question number one. Lambeau Field in Wisconsin is home to which NFL team? Uh, confirming, I think it's the Green Packers. Yeah, I agree. Okay, final answer, the Packers. That is correct, Green Bay Packers. Question number two. What body of water separates Australia and New Zealand? Um, sea of Australia. Any, anyone? There's... Um, no, wait. Is it the time? Has the okay. This, what did you say, Holden? Final answer. Whatever Holden said. Australian Sea. I guess. Go ahead. What's the name Wait, of it? What? I couldn't hear you. Just of Australia. Okay, final just of Australia. No, I'm sorry. It's the Tasman Sea. The Tasman Sea, like Tasmania. Yeah. Question number three. Name the Norwegian playwright who created the tragic dramas Hedda Gabler, Ghosts, An Enemy of the People, and A Doll's House. Conferring Ibsen. I agree. Final answer, Ibsen. Yep, if you hear Norwegian playwright, that's the only one <laughs> that anybody knows you got. Question number four. This former British prime minister spoke the following words in Missouri, popularizing an important phrase for the 20th century. He said, from Staten in the Baltic, west in the Adriatic, an iron curtain has descended across the continent. Behind that line lie all the capitals of the ancient states of Central and Eastern Europe. Which former uh, British Prime Minister spoke those lines? Churchill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think it is, yeah. Okay, final answer, Churchill. Yep, that's where we got the whole Iron Curtain metaphor for sure. Question number five. 
10 milliliters of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid solution require how many milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution to be neutralized? What's the stoichiometry on that? Well, probably 54, right? 10 milliliters. Of yeah, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, anything? Okay, final answer, 10 milliliters. That is correct. Yeah. Don't even understand, excellent. Question number six, well, twice. what does the word un mean in Latin? Is it white Wait, I'm sorry, sphere, I, I small oyster? I'm, I'm gonna try it again. What does the word onion mean in Latin? Is it white spear, small oyster, or large pearl? Um, onion. Uh, does it mean the oyster or? What was the first one again? Um, yeah, it was was large spear, small oyster, and pearl something pearl. I that's not, let's check out the. Time. Okay, final answer, large pearl. It is large pearl, so on choice, Evelyn, that's correct, and that completes round one. Mr. Hayes, oh, thank you. Yep, he got it. <laughs> I, I changed computers thinking it was my other computer that because we were, were breaking up a little. So round two. Uh, math round, right? Avi, Captain, Henry, Jonathan, and Brina. Okay, looks like we've got all four. Here we go. Okay. Round four, or excuse me, round two for all four. Round two is a math round. And remind on the two math questions, you get 30 seconds to answer. Ms. Meisner will prompt you when there's five seconds left. Would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who's the... Uh, Captain in this round. Hi, I'm Brina Ritanji. I'm Henry Lee. Uh, I'm Jonathan Chen. I'm Albi Sandal Kumar. I'll be the captain, and we'd like to thank Ms. Meisner for the great math questions. <laughs> excellent. Thank. I'll take your word for it that they're excellent. Okay. <laughs> question number one in the math round is a math question. Find the domain of the following function y equals the square root of the quantity 16 minus x squared. Begin time. I got negative four to four inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So would the way to phrase it be x, um, X is from negative four to four inclusive. Would it, would it just be that negative four to four inclusive? Yeah. I think you can go with that. All right. Um, final answer: negative four to four inclusive. And Kelly Bowser gives me the big thumbs up. Correct. She knows I don't know the answer for sure. That is correct. Question number two: Name the large breed of dog that is often quite furry and starred in the famous children's film series Beethoven. Oh. Um like brown and it has a white spot do you guys know what dog it is uh golden retriever i don't know i don't think it's a golden retriever Do um, doberman is that no german shepherd time. Um, i just need a labrador so time. final answer to labrador no it's a saint bernard this big huge dog question number three math how many degrees is three pi over two radians? Begin time. 270. 270. 270. Um, final answer, 270 degrees. I think they know these cold, Ms. Meister. That is correct. Question number four. Name the play Shakespeare wrote that involves the head of an ass and a mischievous fair yeah. puck who interferes with young lovers in a forest near Athens. A Midsummer's Night Dream. Yeah. Final Midsummer answer, night a Midsummer's Night Dream. Midsummer That's Night's correct. Dream. A Midsummer round. Night's Dream, sorry. You got it, you got it. That is correct. That completes round two. All right, round three. Nathan, Captain, Holden, Henry, Brina. Wow. 
one, two, three, four people for books and films. And you know, I love both those things a lot. So this is a great category for me. Uh, Pre-announced category, uh, three questions on, um, and remember, I'm asking for the name of the film. Not, the books are going to be part of the clue, but the answer is going to be the name of the film. Okay. Please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round. I'm Brina Ratanji. I'm Henry Lee. I'm Holden Reinsfelder. And I'm Nathan Ridgway. I will be captaining this round, and we would like to thank our principal, Mr. Keene, for his continued support. He's very supportive of uh, Mr. Keene, that's for sure, or Dr. Keene. All right, round three, book to screen adaptations. Question number one, reminder, these are kind of long, so be sure to listen to the whole thing. Question one, the book is much darker than the film and portrayed Ashley, Frank, and Dr. Mead as Ku Klux Klan members who take the law into their own hands when the heroine is attacked. The Klan is not mentioned in the film with only a brief mention of a political meeting. The heroine in the film often acts distracted, whereas in the book, she is shown to be a terrible mother who treats her black servants terribly. Name this film that was recently pulled from HBO streaming services due to its racist insensitivity, but was a huge, huge release. Uh, conferring. Uh, would it be Gone with the Wind or something else? I'm not sure. Yeah, we can, we can go with that. Go with okay. That. Final answer, Gone with the Wind? It is Gone with the Wind. Uh, a tremendous film, but uh, with some terrible background for sure. Question number two. I taught this 1985 novel for years and years and always thought it would make an amazing film. As a matter of fact, I thought this one novel should be three films with the first film entirely focused on the hero at six. He first gets sent to battle school so he can help defeat an alien invasion nicknamed Buggers or Formics. Sadly, the 2013 film version starring Harrison Ford as Colonel Graff was a box office bomb, perhaps because they rushed through the rich opening 100 pages of the far superior novel. Name the book by Orson Scott Card or the 2013 film. Ender's Game. Conferring Ender's Game. Final answer, Ender's Game. It's frustrating when you know as a teacher what would work and then Hollywood blew it. Absolutely blew it. Shame. That is correct. Question number three. In the 2009 book written by Catherine Stockett, Skeeter is big and tall. But in the 2011 film, she is slender and short. Hilly, the main antagonist, is a caring and doting mother in the book is almost purely racist and evil in the film. Constantine's daughter is illegitimate and gets her mother fired by Skeeter's mother with no regrets. But in the film, Skeeter's mother regrets firing Constantine. Name the powerful film about the racist practices of Mississippi families in the 1960s. Uh, conferring the help? Yeah. Yeah, that's my question. Okay. Final answer, the help? It is the help. It's a great, great film and that completes round three. Well done. You got all three of them, right? Yes, you did. All right. Round four, Brina will captain Holden, Evelyn, and Trevor. Mr. Reichel, you are breaking up a lot. I'm not is that ex are you guys experiencing the same thing on your end or is that me? No, we're aware of it. We're gonna try and get through so this one and then he's gonna log off. Okay, just if we have to re-ask the question, please indulge us. Thank you. We will. We will. That's why right. I've already done that one. Okay, round four, one, two, three, four. We are all set and ready to go. Round four, seven questions on a variety of topics. Please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round. I'm Evelyn Sun. I'm Holden Reinsholder. I'm Trevor Weekly. I'm Bruno with Angie. I'll be the captain, and we'd like to thank St. Valentine for giving us an excuse to eat chocolate. Woo We're really excited about that. Okay, here we go then. Question number one. What empire lasted from 1324 to 1922? After falling behind the Habsburg and Russian empires in terms of military might, this empire eventually was dismantled after defeat in World War I, and the territory divided between Britain, France, Greece, and Russia. Name this empire. Conferring Ottoman. I agree. Um, the Ottoman Empire? That is correct. Question number two. What fictional doctor is the main character in a series of books by Hugh Lofting? This character could talk to the animals, even learn their languages. Name him. Dr. Doolittle, right? Yeah, so I'm going to say Dr. Doolittle. I almost burst into song, but I refrained, resisted. But that is correct. 
Question number three. Sunflowers are a plant that has been used over decades to absorb arsenic from the soil in areas that have been contaminated. The technique of using plants to absorb and remove toxins from the soil is called what? Botano detoxification. I don't know. Time. Detoxification. No, I'm sorry. It's phytoremediation. Phytoremediation. P H Y T O. That is incorrect. Question number four. What was the name of the main character in the Friday the 13th film series? He first appeared in 1980 as a young son of a camp cook turned killer. Name the man behind the mask. Referring Jason Voorhees. Yeah, um, I'm gonna defer to Holden, you can pronounce that. Uh, Jason Voorhees, final answer. That is correct, excellent. Question number five. This board game was originally created in France, which is somewhat surprising considering that country is not one of the 42 available on the game board. However, going for Europe on the whole is not a bad play in this game of global domination and world conquest. Name it. Risk, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll answer risk. Yes, academic team players always seem to love risk. I do, that's for sure. Question number six. The final link of the first U.S. Continental Railway was completed in this state in which approximately 60% of the state's residents are members of the Mormon church. Name the state. Utah. That is correct. And question number seven. He wrote The Man in the Iron Mask, a story about twin brother of Louis XIV of France. But he is more famous as the author of The Count of Monte Cristo and The Three Musketeers. Name this French author. Confirming the law. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is correct, and that completes the math for Frederick. I'm glad you could hear all those questions since you got them all right. Thank you, Excellent. Urbana. Or oh, excuse me for Urbana. Urbana, sorry. Yes. Urbana. I see I the FAC library. If I'm not mistaken, Miss Meisner, do we have a tie? We have a tie for first place, Mr. Reichel. I knew that was going to happen our, sooner or later. Our protocol is. Who's the tie? Uh, first, in Urbana and Frederick. Okay. Three questions each, right? Yep. So, Dell, we're going to go ahead and let Urbana do their three questions first since they're on here. That's a good idea. That sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Urbana's got one, two, three on. This is our first, this is our first, uh, this is our first one that we've had a uh, tie, so I'm excited. <laughs> okay, three questions. Please introduce yourselves one last time and who will be the captain in this exciting playoff round? I'm Evelyn Sun. I'm Holden Ronsfelder. I'm Trevor Weekly. I'm Bernard Kanji and I'll be the captain. Okay, and then here we go. Question number one. Let's make sure this is right. Yeah. Question number one. 1515 was the last time this European country went to war with another country when they lost against the French. In the century since, this country has cultivated the idea of neutrality, and over 200 years ago, this country was acknowledged as a neutral state in the Treaty of Paris. Name the country. That is correct. Question number two. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail are his sisters and he is constantly scheming to get into far Farmer MacGregor's garden, named the hero of the children's books by Beatrix Potter. Peter Rabbit. Final answer, Peter Rabbit. That is correct. Question number three. In the abyss of the ocean, no sunlight reaches the ocean floor. In areas where there is volcanic activity, there may be deep sea thermal vents. Instead of photosynthesis by green plants making glucose, Specialized bacteria use this element with hydrogen in the process of chemosynthesis to make glucose. Name it. Is it sulfur? That is correct, and you got all three right. Excellent. Don't go anywhere because the other team might get all three right as well. Who knows? We need to ask Urbana to go off of camera, though. We're bringing on Frederick. <laughs> Okay, you guys, go back to UHS Academic Tournament 2021. 
Then we'll come back here, I assume, um, after yep. Frederick goes. Okay. Yep. yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, welcome back, Mia. We've got one, two, all welcome. There's three. Where's Sam? Miss Scarlett, your fourth player. Uh, it's Sam Boyson. Oh, there he is. There he is. All right. First time we've had a tie. Here we go. Three questions. Um, please introduce yourselves one last time and tell me who will be the captain in this exciting concluding round. Hello, my name is Mia Venezia. I'm a senior at Frederick High School, and I will be the captain for this tiebreaker round. Hi, my name is Jonas Chalkley, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, my name is Sam Boyson. I'm a senior. And my name is Paul Kyle Chings, and I'm a junior. All right, here we go then. Three questions. Question number one. This is Frederick, yes. Question number one. What empire lasted from 1324 to 1922? After falling behind the Habsburg and Russian empires in terms of military might, this empire eventually was dismantled after defeat in World War I and the territory divided between Britain, France, Greece, and Russia. Name this empire. Ottoman Empire. Shall we go with that then? All right, finally, it's the Ottoman Empire. That is correct. Question number two. What fictional doctor is the main character in a series of books by Hugh Lofting? This character could talk to the animals, even learn their languages. Name him. Dr. Doolittle, right? Dr. Doolittle, you're right, yes. All right, final answer, Dr. Doolittle. That is correct, Dr. Doolittle. And question number three. Sunflowers are a plant that have been used over decades to absorb arsenic from the soil in areas that have been contaminated. The technique of using plants to absorb and remove toxins from the soil is called what? I mean, would it be purification? Crop rotation. I mean, that's crop rotation. That's not, but it's not the same thing. That's just like planting a different crop every year. Time. Uh, final answer, crop rotation. No, I'm sorry. It's phytoremediation, P-H-Y-T-O, phytoremediation. So two out of three for Frederick High. Frederick, you can stay on. We're bringing everyone back to announce the winner. This tie was Mr. Kowski's fault, by the way, because she predicted this last week. <laughs> no, that one question, oh, well, that was tough. Okay. Right. Welcome back, everyone. An exciting, exciting first match. Definitely. Hey, um, we have we listened to Frederick um, during their match, and you gave the same tie-breaking questions. So um, we feel it's only right and proper for us to let you know that we knew those questions, um, you know, the answers to those questions. And um, I just don't think it's fair for us to take uh, credit for a win here. Unless, of course, Frederick listened to our match, and in which case, you know, it would seem to maybe the the best way to handle this would be to do questions that have not been asked in, you know, in in the first match here. But if you if you know, Frederick, um, you know, didn't listen in or anything, and they feel that they can claim that first place. Um, you know, we're willing to concede that because we want to be above board here. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. That's that's very admirable, and it's setting the right tone. Ms. Garlitz, can you comment if you hear any information? 
information with your team? Uh, no, I did not share any information with my team and my team did not watch Urbana. They were in their own room. So they didn't hear any of Urbana's questions. And I'm confused. I was under the impression that no teams were allowed to listen to any of the other questions because that's giving we significant are recording. clues. We are recording and this is something that we can clearly discuss. Um, but right now, why don't we go ahead, Dell? I'm just going to announce the winner. It's based on the questions themselves and then we will discuss ourselves and a, a coaches match. Okay. It's just, you know, we had, we, I had on uh, the team in the waiting room and, right. you know, and, and we, we were, we were listening like mm -hmm. in like the same we would do in the auditorium. If mm -hmm. you get to watch the other matches ahead of you. Okay. We'll discuss mm -hmm. that. We, we okay. will discuss that at another time, but uh, so a complicated round indeed. So we have Catoctin. Um, I've asked everybody to come back. So we had Catoctin with 10 points. Fred had 15 plus two. And Urbana had 15 plus three. But we will reevaluate.